So again, welcome everyone. We are now carrying forward the the connection between Perik Aleph, chapter one and chapter two, Perik Bet. And we said last week that Bereshit Bara Elokim, Elokim is the uh, God of the cosmos, the God of uh, earth, and so the God of nature. And so chapter one is um, our relationship to God um, in the cosmos. Then we said chapter two is Vaitzer Hashem Elokim, Hashem. That's the God that we have a personal relationship to. So the transition from God of the cosmos to a personal God is what each Perek is trying to tell us. When we and so when as we read Perek Bet together, which we will do next week, I hope, then we'll see this more in detail, whether when Perek 1, Perek Aleph was these steps, these six and seven steps of, of creation, Perek Bet is more of man and God, right, and we'll, we'll see it. I want to throw out one more theme for you guys to think about as you do the readings, chapters 1, 2, and 3, because some of the questions that you asked related to Adam and Chava and questions like that. So let me throw out chapter one is man, uh, excuse me, is yeah, man and woman. Yeah, man, man and woman in nature with the responsibilities of stewardish. Chapter two and three is man and woman as intellectual beings, sikhli. And then finally moving to man and woman as soulmates, as soulmates. And see if that helps you in the flow of this without feeling like the, the readings are, are don't flow together. Okay, now to let's go back um, to the Ramban. I'm going to try to do a share screen now. Um, and our... Um, when we read each of these, we said that each each step was like systems engineering, that there was a command, um, a fulfillment of the command, an evaluation, and a uh, and a summary. So the Ramban is going to work, let's call it along slightly similar lines, but it's going to be uh, a, a little bit a little bit different, partly because, uh, he wants to stay closer to the text. In other words, he's not looking for a moral purpose. He's looking to learn how the world uh, came into being. So here we have the Ramban. Let's switch it to English. So these are the psukim. Vayomer Elokim Yehi O, Vayehi O. So Vayomer, we said, following Rashi, following others, Vayomer is willed. He's going to say something similar. Yeah, he, he also agrees is a powerful world, word. And then he'll explain, he'll explain why it says Vayahi Or and not Vayahi Chen. He's going to say something a little different than what we said when we walked through this. But then Vayar Elohim, he's going to say something different than we did in God Saw at the Or Kitov. Then he's a little concerned. It says Kitov, and then more things happened. So why is that? After the Kito, more things happened, and then God separated by Avdel Elokim ben Oru ben Choshech, and God separated between the light and the dark, and then finally Vaikra. So the Ramban is going to say something different. We, Rashi and everyone else said he gave names to, in parallel to Adam giving names. He's going to say no. He's going to give another uh, explanation to this. Uh, so he called. Elokim la or yom, he called the 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 light was day. Velachoshech kara laila, right? And the the night he called the the darkness he called night. And now vayer vayvoker yom echad. So he also Avril is going to give a slightly different answer to the question that we asked and that you asked again a second time. What does vayer vayvoker mean here, vis a vis the light? Uh, and the darkness vis-a-vis -vis the day and the light kind of a thing. Okay, so does anyone want to uh, read slowly? 
uh, the Ramban here that I have up here? English? No one. Can somebody? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And God saw the light that it was good. Rabbi Shlomo. Oh, wait, wait. Sorry, 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 sorry. Stay with me. Start one back one. Okay. No, that's where I started. So. No, no. I moved it back one. Vayomer Elokim Yehior. Oh, the Hebrew. No, 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 no. Now, now, now. I, I, I had it on the wrong one. Now I just clicked it. Oh. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> and God said, "Let there be light." The word saying here indicates will, as in the verse, what dost thy soul say that I should do it for thee? Which means, what do you want and desire? So that's very consistent. That's the exact same thing as we said, uh, our shot. And we said, remember the Ivri said to Moshe Rabbeinu, are you... Are, do you plan on do you, do you will on killing me? So that's good. That's consistent with everything we said. And he's going to uh, so please please go on. Similarly, sorry. Similarly, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the eternal hath spoken, means as he has willed, for such is the will before him. So again, the concern is we don't always want to associate speech to God. We can on occasion when we, but here we're talking about God willed this, right? It's an extension of Breshit Barai Lokim, and this is uh, the Ramban is going to tell us how how in fact how it formed in itself. Now he goes some, or it may be, or it may be. That the word saying here means thinking, as in the verse, thou says in, their, in thy heart, and the chiefs of Judah shall say in their heart. The purpose so is to you, state. Right. So when, once we use the word say in your heart, that Im implies thinking. Right. Right. Is there a difference okay. between belibo and elibo? So, uh, Because there are other times that somebody speaks to their heart as opposed to in their heart. Yes, yeah, so that's very that's a that's a good point. So even with yourself and no one else is in the room, do, the question is, do we consider that a form of speech or a form of thought? Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. The purport is to state that the creation was not done with toil. Our mm -hmm. rabbis have also called this thought, thus they have said, the thought concerning what was to be created on a particular day was during the day. The deed itself was at sunset. This teaches, this teaches that creation was thought out that there is a reason for everything created, that creation was not a simple manifestation of mere will alone. Okay, so he wanted to include here design, purpose. Good, good. And now he wants to, so that was the word Vayomer. Now he wants to deal with the word Vayehi. The word, the word being, being, let yeah. there be. Uh, indicates a deed for the present time, just as, and thou would be their king, meaning their king from this moment on. Therefore, scripture says that when he created the substance of the heavens, he said that from that substance, there should become, should come forth a shining matter called light. So, so the Ramban didn't feel the need to make the big deal of the word Yehi that, that we did when we studied it, that it's a strong word and all of that. He, he's just saying that it, how it came into be as a result of that will, so to speak. And now 
it says Vayahi Or. So he, in response to that, and there was light. And all the rest of the days, it says Vayahi Chen, and it was so. So he's going to explain that to us. Okay, please continue. And there was light. The verse does not say, and it was so, as it is said on other days. Because the light did not remain in this state all the time, as did the other creations. Concerning this matter, our rabbis have an interpretation with a profound secret. Know the term, know that the term uh, day, as used in the story of the creation, was in the case of the creation of heavens, of heaven and earth a real day composed of hours and seconds. And there were six days like the six days of the work week, as it is the plain meaning of the verse of the verse in the profound. So, that's the shot. so he's, he, he's reading it as is, and that's a little different than Rashi. So he's, he's debating Rashi here, right? In the profounder sense, the emanations issuing from the most high are called days for every divine saying which evoked an existence is called day. These were six for unto God there is the greatness and the power, etc. The sayings, however, there are ten because regarding the first three emanations, the term day does not apply at all. The explanation of the order of the verses in terms of the profound interpretation is sublime and recond recondite. Our knowledge of it is less than that of a drop from the vast ocean. So, um, so, uh, so the Ramban is uh, um, jumping ahead. We're, we haven't even gotten to the next verse, and he's. Um, the next verse is when I call the light day, and then I summarize the first day. And so he's saying we had the six or seven days, and that's the um, that's the, uh, the the seven emanations, and then uh, the the top three uh, emanations of like uh, Keter, Bina, and Chokhmah uh, are are their own in their own category. So normally. When we get to the Kabbalistic uh, Ramban, we we skip it. But he he was uh, trying to associate this literally, I think, in his mind on how the world emanated physically, so to speak. And that that's that's probably why we're reading it now. Finally, uh, right now the now the next verse four. And so immediately by he or, and it says God saw the light and it was good. And then it says he separated. So let's see what the Ramban says here now. Um, a, a different volunteer. Thank you very much, Rabbi Goldman. And anyone else? I can read some. <laughs> good, good. And then also we'll we'll ask you to read when we get to Vayera Vayivoker, because you had asked about that too. I thought of you. Thank you. Okay, God, so. I said, um, and where we and God saw the light that, uh, yeah. that we, okay. yeah, and, yeah. Okay. and God saw the light that it was good Rabbi I what Shlomo, Ra, Ra, Shlomo Yitzchaki. okay wrote here too we must depend on the words of the homiletic God saw that the wicked were unworthy of using the light and so he set it aside for the righteous in the world to come but according so, to the, okay. so wait wait so so we're trying to answer what does the word vayar mean here what does the word that god saw so the agada literally mm -hmm. god saw into the world so to speak it goes beyond the light being good right the rashi saying and he, he right so this is an all that was separated, uh, so to speak, the old, the, from the word ganuz. It was hidden for us for the time to come, for the world to come. Right. But then Rashi himself gives a shot. But according, according but, but to the plain meaning. But according to the plain meaning of the verse, uh, explain it thus. He saw the light, that the light was good, 
and that it was not seemly for it. And my eyes are not that great. Seemly for it, and the darkness to function in a confused manner, and the dark to function in a confused confused manner. He therefore assigned the one sphere of activity to the daytime, and the one sphere of activity to the nighttime. And Rabbi so, Abraham. So wait, wait. So, so this is. This is the Ramban isn't uh, um, um, the light was good, but then it was not seemly for it to be a certain way. So the Ramban doesn't like that. The Ramban is going to give us a, a different shot than what Rashi just said. And now first do the Ibn Ezra. You mean it wasn't Ezra. seemly for, for the you mean it wasn't seemly for the light to so, go into darkness or so th he's gonna articulate his, his, okay. what he doesn't like about what Rashi says, but okay. he, he's saying right after you say God saw it was good, and then you're saying now it's not so good and I need to fix it, so to speak. I have to separate that kind of a that kind of an approach. Um okay. So do the Ibn Ezra and then we'll see the Ramah. So uh, oh, and Rabbi um, Abraham Ibn Ezra said, the word vayar, and he saw, for the same meaning here in, I can't read that, right? And, and I saw, which uh, refers to the thought in the heart, and he divided, refers to his giving them different names. But the words of both Rashi and Ibn Ezra are incorrect, for if they were, it would appear that there was on the part of God a change of mind and new counsel, as if to say that after God so, said, uh, let there be light, and God said, wait a minute, where are we? And God said, there was light. Uh, let there be a, oh, let there be light. You saw that it was good? Uh, where am I? Did I lose it? I, I'm not sure. He uh, divided. Where are we? So, 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 so oh, go all the way it. back. But, yeah, but the did. words, no, you can go all the way back, but the words of Rashi and Ibn Ezra are incorrect. Right. Or, okay. Or if they, um, or if they were. Uh, and as if to say after that, God said, let there be light, and there was light. He saw that it was good, and therefore he divided it between darkness, just as a human being who does not know the nature of something until it comes into existence. Rather, the order followed in the process of creation is that bringing forth of things into actual existence is called Amira. Thus, and God said, let there be light. And God said, let there be a firmament. And God said, let the earth put forth grass and the permanence of things called forth into existence is called Raya. Raya. So, and, so, and, so, so the Ramban is saying Vayar is different than Rashi with the that it was mixed up, or uh, uh, rather, Vayar is another step, like Vayomer is a, is willing it. He is into being, and Vayar makes it permanent. Vayar makes it permanent. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, as I saw in Ecclesiastes, and similarly, and the woman and the woman saw that the tree was good for food in the language of the rabbis. Right, so we're gonna see that we're gonna see that right in chapter three, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In the language of the rabbis, we also find I see the words of Admam. Likewise, and the king said unto Zadok, the priest, seest thou, return into the city in peace. The purport of the word seeing is thus to indicate that that continuing existence is at his will. And if that will should for a second depart from them, um, okay, I lost it, wait a minute. <laughs> they will turn into naught. Sorry, I moved it. They will turn yeah. into naught. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that that's that's actually we've discussed this before. That's very very medieval thinking that God wills the word world's existence every single second of of the day. Uh, that that's uh, consistent consistent with uh, that line of thought. So again, 
where we had said Vayomer was will and he was brought into being and Vayar was a form of evaluation, he's saying it's much more than evaluation, it's making it permanent or 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 uh, or permanent at this time through my will right now just as scripture says now just as scripture says in connection with the work of each day and god saw that it was good and on the sixth day when everything was completed it says and god saw that everything that he had made uh, saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good so it does say that on the first day when light came into existence and God saw that it was good, meaning he desired its existence forever. Um, okay. So well, that's interesting. So now he, he flips around when we read it. because We said when we did our shot before, we said because Hashem said Yehi Or, and then he said Vayehi Or specifically and not Vayehi Chen, we said our shot is that it is permanent, that it is permanent, because we're using the word Havaya, the word Yehi, twice, right? And then remember, we also gave the kind of beyond the Pshat, there's the Or of Olam Hazeh and the Or of Olam Haba. That's why there's two Yehis. We mentioned that. So now the Ramban came back around. Uh, um, And talking about um, the connection, just as says in connection with the work of each day, and God saw that it was good. And on the sixth day, when everything was completed, God saw, and it was very good. So the first day, when light in same in consistence, God saw that it was good, meaning He desired its existence. The verse adds the light. So now He's asking a different question, right? It doesn't say Vayar Elokim Kitov. It says, Vayar Elohim et haor kitov, the, the, the light. So now he adds an innuendo here. Uh, the verse adds the light because, go ahead. Because had it just said, and God saw that it was good, it would have referred to the creation of the heaven and the earth. And at that time, he had not yet decreed for, that, for them permanence, as they did not remain as they were. Instead, from the substance to created on the first day, the firmament was made on the second day. And on the third, the waters and the dust were separated in the dry land, which he called earth, was formed. He then decreed for them permanence and said concerning them, and God saw that it was good. No oh, good. So now that, so the Ramban is staying closer to this text in the sense that he wants us to feel that each of these things That's came good. into being on a consecutive day, on a consecutive day, uh, physically, not just just not just morally, so to speak. Okay, good. One more. We're doing. We're getting our um, bonds covered tonight. Let me just see. Yeah. So Avril, if you don't mind, just keep going. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and God called the light day. The verse states that uh, time was created and God made the length of the day and the length of the night. The purport of the word Vaikrat and he called is to indicate that since Adam later gave names to all the beasts, the fowls, etc., it states that those things which were made before his existence were were given names by God. That is the opinion of Rabbi Ibrahim, Ibn Ezra. So this is the word Vaikra. So the Ibn Ezra in his pshat was trying to create symmetry between when Adam in the next chapter gave names to all the animals. So this, so the Ibn Ezra is creating that symmetry here. The Ramban doesn't like that so much. <laughs> The correct interpretation is that the matter of calling a name here indicates the division which bounded them when they assumed their form. Thus did the rabbi say, God said to the light, the day shall be your boundary. And to darkness, he said, the night shall be your boundary. So again, he, he's trying to physically uh, stay, stay closer to the text. Now, um, 
he wants to deal with this question is what is Vaihiera, what is Vaihivoka? And what was there was evening and, and was morning. And we we took a few stabs at it and we said there's a Rashbam and an Ibn Ezra on this. Um uh, and uh so let let let's look at this now. So here's the one. Go ahead, Avril. And there was evening and there was morning. There was evening and there was morning of one day. Okay. The beginning of the night is called Arab, which also means mingling, because shapes of things appear confused in it. And the beginning of the day is called Bokeh, which also means examining, because then a man can distinguish between various forms. This coincides with the explanation of Rabbi Abraham Ibn Ezra by way of the simple explanation of scripture. It could not have said, and there was evening and there was morning the first day, because the second day had not yet been made. Mm. Um, the first precedes a second in number or degree, but both exist, whereas one does not connote the existence of another of a second. Mm. Right. So so it says Yom Echad, one day. It doesn't say first day, because mm. we can't say first day because we're not sure there's going to be a second day. Everyone agree with that? Yes. Yes. Maybe maybe what it means is that an evening and a morning makes a whole day, not necessarily in, and leave out the first day, but it, it if you've translated it as one day. Okay, so 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 there's so Janet's correct, there's two topics here. So we have the word in Hebrew yimama. Yimama is a 24, what we call a 24 hour period. So that 24 hour period, right, uh, is composed of the day and the night because, right, uh, um, so we already on verse four, um, oh, excuse me, in this verse, we call the Wait, light I, day. We call the, go ahead, Bron. I just Bron? wanted, I wanted to disagree on the days. Uh, you said whether or not we knew there was going to be a second day or a third day. Like Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I mean, it, we, we might not have known or whatever, but by the time this is written, we know that, you know. No, no. There's... So so we're we're reading from the text. I wasn't giving you my. Uh, no, but, I mean, but regardless or whatever, this is not like a. This is not like a theoretical exercise that we're going through or whatever. Like we know when this is written down that there's good that there are more days. So what is it what is it Matt? Like I I I just don't understand the question of of whether or not there are going to be more days. There are obviously more days. We know there are more okay. days. Okay, hold 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 that a second. I just hold that a second, we'll come to it. I just want to finish Janet's point. Janet's point is the Yom and the Laila together comprise the 24-hour period, and that 24-hour period is Yom Echad, right, Janet? That's what you were saying? That, that was my point, yeah. Yes, so, the, the, so we got Janet's point out now. Now let's go back to um, examine Baruch uh, Yosef's uh, critique of the... Uh, so, so by the way, he explained why Erev is the beginning of the night. It's dusk; you can't see so well. Boker is you start seeing very well, and uh, and so by way, uh, so so that's why he Erev by Boker is telling us the transition points that compromise that comprise the day. Um, by way of the simple, it could not have said this is what you were saying the first day. Let's just touch this. Yeah, no, my, my point my point though was that Yom Akads can simply mean one day. It doesn't have to okay, good. mean the first day. Good, 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 good. Now Baruch Yosef, are you there? I'm here. Baruch. So how's your eyesight? Read this footnote. Read <laughs> this little footnote. Yeah. Uh instead. Which, oh. Instead, well, like this, yeah. Instead, it says one day. Is that where you want me to read from? Yeah, yeah, please, please. Instead, it says one day. 
C. Rashi who says that according to the regular mode of expression, it should have really said the first day. He explains, however, the expression one day on the basis of the Medrash is because the Holy One, blessed is he, was then the only one in his universe since the angels were not created until the second day. One day thus means the day of one being. It is interpretation of Rashi that Ramban alludes to when he comments that according to the simple meaning of scripture, it could not have said the first day. Okay. All right. So another point, another point, and that falls, that's consistent with your point, then it's consistent with Janet's point, I think. Yeah. Everyone yeah. agree with that? Yeah. yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't like what it says following or whatever in the sense that because the second day had not yeah, not been made, the first precedes the second. Well, we know that. Like, obviously, the second comes after the first. But that's just not how, you know, if the first day had only happened, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be writing the story if there was only one day. Okay. So good. So both, both of you, uh, I think, I thank you both for your comments. And now uh, the last paragraph, Avril. Uh, we're at, are we on some scholars? Yes. Yeah. Okay, some scholars explain that one day is a reference to the rotation of the sphere upon the face of the whole earth in 24 hours, as every moment thereof is morning in some different place and night in the opposite place. If so, the verse alludes to that which will take place in the firmament after the luminaries will be placed in the firmament of the heavens. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see the food. Okay. All right. So he's saying that's the Ibn Ezra on uh, on this verse, and the Rambam and the Rambam uh, Rambam. Right. And what's this one? Okay. So I think yeah. I don't. I let me just see. So um, I think. I think the, I think the uh, safari for not maybe not the first time, but it's rare. I think, I think they're missing, I think they're missing a part of the Ramban. Give me a second to look in my Ramban here, and uh, and we'll cover it if it's here. Uh, Let's see. Let's call this explain. Are you checking? Uh, yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking as well. I'm on page 30, 31 and 32 of the volume. But it does seem to be something missing. Yeah. So, uh, so it just struck me because I was working out of out of my book. Uh, so let, let me read to you uh, a little bit, and then Jeff, if you can find it, you can read it a little, little bit. Okay, well, yeah, I'm um, trying to read that you see. Okay. Because yeah. the part that involves time, Jeff. Yeah, okay, yeah. What, 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 on what's verse the, five. On verse five. Verse five. Verse five. Uh, God called the light day. Well, God have five. Uh, yeah, and God called the light day. The verse states that time was created. Yeah, so we uh, read that one. We read that one. And there was evening. There was morning. Okay, let there be a firmament. Let's say. Um, no, okay, so so let's uh, so let's uh, yeah. Well, let's, well I uh, have at the bottom. I, I, I'm in the page thirty three. Ends at the bottom of what I'm seeing on my screen, where it says, "Will be placed in the firmament of the heavens." You'll find that at the top of page 33, and the next one on six says, "Let there be a firmament." Let there be a firmament. That's the next paragraph. I right. Have. That's the next verse. So, okay, so maybe, yeah. So I think so. So we're fine. So uh, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to set up some thoughts um, for. Uh, in the text for 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 next week to think about, um, I'm want to go to the fifth day, 
the fifth day. And Vayomer Elokim Yishritzu Amayim Sheretz Nefesh Chaya. So Sheretz Nefesh Chaya is we said swarming living creatures, but because of the word Nefesh Chaya, I sort of want to ask you if it possibly, possibly could be the Nachash, the, the snake, um, or could it possibly been an attempt at making man? So let's look at verse 6. Verse 6 says, let the earth bring forth Every living kind to say it's nefesh chaya lemina, right? Again, nefesh chaya lemina to each species, and then, and then it says, "Let us make a man, right? Let us make mankind." Nase adam. Let us. It says, "Nase adam, man." Bitzalmenu kidmutenu, and they will have the responsibilities within nature to be stewards. And then it says God created, and we discussed this, that, that man is incomplete. He's just been uh, created, and he has to complete himself. And he has the bracha of procreation and vegetarianism. And we said Perek Aleph is total equality uh, between man and woman and we in nature. And then we said, and we said that that applies to everything except man, because man was not completed, and that was Yom HaShishi. And then it, it, we said that the bracha, means God rested, that he let the rule, the, the laws of nature run the world, like sort of like the Rambam says. And then on occasion, if God intervenes in the world, that's like a Chilul Shabbat. So we are living in the seventh day, Pikuach Nefesh kind of a thing. And the goal of man is to complete the Kedusha the, uh, of the seventh day. And then we would get to the point where Hashem would say, Vayar Elokim Kitov on the seventh day, and then so mankind would complete himself and come into the eighth day. And that's where we left off with uh, our understanding of man in nature. And now comes the word toldot. Well, I'm in verse four now. Toldot, we said, is a very powerful world. It's either story or genealogy. But let me ask you, if I... If, uh, if I told you where in Tanakh is the word toldot mentioned, it's mentioned 14 times, 12 of them are in Sefer Breshit, right? Anyone remember any others? So in Megillat Rut, we have toldot peretz, so we have the the genealogy of the Malchut. So all that's missing missing now is Kihuna, right? And the priesthood, the priesthood. So in Bamidbar, we have Ele Todot Moshe Aaron, and then the Aharon got the Kihuna. So we have the Toldot of mankind, the Toldot of the Avot, the Bnei Israel, and then Kihuna U Malchut. Okay, so we have this use of the word baram. It's almost reflexive, right? Not asher bara elokim, right? Biyom asot elokim eretz v'shamayim. Such is the story of heaven and earth, when or as they were created, baram, when God, Hashem. This is Hashem Elohim, that's the God that we have a personal relationship with. And now, instead of telling us how the world was created, it says, So what does the word siach mean in Hebrew besides 
a shrub of the field. Siach. Anyone? Sicha, like talking? Yes, yes. So siach might be speech, and sicha might be speech between two people. So now God wants to come into siach with man. Terem yebaaretz, we call Esav asadeh. There's no grass. Terem is kilo, and there's no rain. And one more time, Hashem Elohim. Finally, the Adam Ain Lavodet Adama, and man is missing. So this is the chapter of man and God. The first chapter was man in his place in the universe. This is the chapter of a relationship, and and, and then so the word Ed Yalemina Aretz. We we discussed this and. Uh, and watered the land. And here's the verse seven is critical here. Vayitzer Hashem Elohim. So we said this is not bara, and this is not asa. We said bara is started, asa is finished, and vayitzer is something in the middle. Now, how many yuds are in that word vayitzer? Everyone look. One or two. Two. Yeah, so typically you could have written it with one, Vayitze, from the word Yitzira. So immediately what comes to mind is Yetzer Hatov V'Yetzer Hara. Mm -hmm. Comes, so man, if if in chapter one, we said, we said, Tov uh, Avol, Choshech, and all that, that there was evil was part of creation. Here, any evil that we might be talking about in the world is the result of Yetzer HaTov Yetzer HaRa, the imbalance that would happen. The proper balance is we need them both. So, okay, so God creates this man in the middle, this middle creation, right? Vayitzer Hashem Elohim Et HaAdam Afar. What does the word Afar mean with an Ayn as opposed to Afar with an Aleph? So the translator here was very good here. Let's see, he uses the word live soil, he uses. So that's what afar is. Efer with an aleph is like the ashes of the para duma, this would be efer. So, so here man is made from the fertile part of the earth, from the afar of the earth. Vaipach be'apav nishmat chayim. And now God blows Again, a critical, a critical use of language here. After Hashem blew in the neshama, the, the uh, breath of life. So I'm looking at the clock here. We still want to talk about uh, Israel a little bit. So let us try to stop the recording. I left it at an exciting spot, Rachel says. So wait, let me stop the share. Maybe you can't stop the recording without uh, doing that. Pause recording, Alt-P.